Hello again, welcome back to Asgard and welcome back to our creative building series. Uh, of course, last episode we built this big starter home and while I was working on it, you know, I was thinking, you know, what, what our next project was going to be and originally I was wanting to do either a mine, um, either over in there or over uh, in this area right here, um, but I was wanting to build a mine um, and kind of like a little industrial type area or uh, start doing some farms and I decided as I was building this uh, Originally the mine was actually going to be right here And it was just gonna be a little bridge that goes across and we were gonna Decorate it out and then do maybe another build project, but I changed my mind uh, While I was building uh, this little area over here, right? It's just a nice little spot uh, Where we kind of got all these rivers kind of converging and I was thinking What if we turn this into kind of an industrial area, right? Uh, this space right out here. We've got all this great water run a bridge across and then kind of see where the build goes I tend to build um, kind of in a fluid a fluid method where I just kind of start building and then see where it ends up I usually don't like plan it out too much um, And that's kind of what I did here and it evolved quite a bit uh, So anyways, let's go ahead and jump into the build and then we'll kind of talk through it as we go so the first thing we're going to be working on here is going to be the bridge. Uh, this is going to be, it's well, I was starting kind of with just a straight bridge across to this, and then I was going to run a smaller bridge over, but then I, I got to thinking, and I was like, well, I kind of want to do a covered bridge, and then I was like, well, I kind of want to have it come in, come in at an angle, uh, so we could do kind of like an angled covered bridge, and then it became this big covered walkway. Uh, so it did, it did evolve quite a bit as I was building it. Uh, but you can see right here where I was starting to build out this bridge and it was going to just basically go across and then angle and then uh, about right in here, somewhere in here is where I decided, uh, let's do a covered bridge. I love covered bridges and we haven't built a covered bridge in some time. So I uh, decided to go ahead and start running up some pillars there uh, that are going to support the roof uh, that sits above this, uh, this covered bridge. And... Uh, this is about the time, too, I was thinking, I scouted out the rivers uh, that kind of run around our area because, um, you know, whatever whatever area would lead to a large body of water would be kind of the, the direction that the current would be flowing, right? And there actually is a swamp. I'll take you guys over uh, and just kind of show you my thinking there uh, at the end. But um, I decided to kind of have the, the river, I in theory, it's flowing towards this big... Uh, inlet that we were looking at where we're building today uh, all these all these various rivers so I was like well how about we just do an industrial district right so we're gonna have kind of like a sawmill we're gonna have a mine we're gonna have a warehouse all that stuff uh, and this this build just continued to evolve uh, from that from that idea of having basically the sawmill and the mine and then it kind of expanded out from there uh, but right now we're just kind of running this bridge walkway uh, type thing you can see the 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 walkway has kind of dammed up part of the river there uh, and that's purpose that's purposeful so that we kind of have the water flowing in a very specific uh, direction that we want it to be flowing because we're going to be using uh, the sawmill that's down here we're going to have it in theory uh, the logs we floated down the river to the sawmill where they're then collected ran through the sawmill and you know cut down into planks um, I will say that this build it's a whole lot bigger than our starter house uh, so we do generally uh, everything is a lot faster um, in order to keep the video at a decent length uh, and so everything is a bit more sped up and you know we're doing a whole lot not everything of course is going to be captured on camera we do do a bit of decorating today uh, we do a massive amount of building lots of it's just a, overall a very big project so right here this is where we kind of stop with the walkway for now we've got the basis of the uh, the walkway set up and and how it's going to run uh, in relation to this area a rough a rough outline basically uh, we're going to come in as we build things we're going to come in and kind of clean things up a bit now I bring it out right here uh, just to kind of see in relation to where that curves uh, where to build our sawmill. Uh, so this is going to be the location for our sawmill, and of course we're going to need a water wheel, we're going to need a dock where the logs that are floated down the river could be collected. Um, we're going to need 
the actual saw mill, like the blades and everything, uh, as well as a way that it would um, actually work as far as a sawmill goes. So we do do a little bit of engineering today, which I had a bit of fun with. We do quite a bit of engineering, in fact, uh, with our projects today because it is an industrial district and we're going for kind of like a medieval mechanical uh, design today. So you can see I ran uh, some saw blades there for the, with the stone cutters and then the lecterns along the side to kind of give it that look. Uh, my thinking was a lot based on the Skyrim um, lumber mills, uh, kind of the way they had those set up with those like slanted bits uh, where it kind of keeps the log in place as it's going down the saw blades. Uh, so I tried to do something like that kind of from memory. Um, and then here we're going to start bringing out the dock. Uh, I kind of, it kind of got a little bit off camera there, but it's just, I was kind of jumping around doing, um, uh, various different little areas of the build here. And we're also going to be setting up, uh, this is about the point that I decided, oh, we should set up a crane today. Because if we're moving these logs, we're moving stuff from the mine, it's going to be a lot of heavy materials. A crane would be perfect for this build, and I haven't built a crane personally in a long time. Um, since back in my days of like really heavy vanilla I guess uh, so I decided at least I don't think but I decided well we're gonna build a crane today as well so just lots of lots of medieval uh, mechanics that we're gonna be working with uh, at this point we're gonna start going ahead and just decorating out the sawmill uh, so you can kind of see what it's gonna look like um, basically as we're building these buildings we're gonna go ahead and decorate them out uh, as we build them and then at the end, we'll come through and just kind of do some cleanup, some texturing, and just general uh, stuff like that around the base. So uh, basically just kind of cluttering out the sawmill. You know, they would have axes on hand and things like that. Uh, the chains, we'll take a closer look at them at the end of the episode. But I tried to set them up so it would be kind of like a pulley system. So it would they'd be able to hook the logs, lift them with that uh, kind of this contraption, right, and move them with these chains. Uh, onto the blades and then they'd be ran down the blades and then fall off the end where then they could be positioned uh, on top of the crane platform and then the crane could lift them and move them uh, as needed. So I tried to do some thinking there uh, as far as the way we set things up, tried to make it all pretty logical. Um, I'm not, you know, I don't, I've never worked in a medieval sawmill, but just trying to, trying to make it uh, make sense and everything. Um, and then we also will, at the end, we'll go in and add some logs that are like floating down the river. So, uh, now at this point we're going to start setting up our crane. And this crane is going to be set up on top of this big mountain because it's a perfect location. And there was actually, right behind it, if you look right here, uh, right behind there, there's actually this big natural hole in the ground. Uh, which actually goes down to about the right layer that I want to run my mine. So I decided, well, we'll make it so that the crane can access the mine. And, you know, technically, in theory, it could, it could turn and get the things from the mine and then bring them over to kind of the, the warehouse area that we're going to be setting up after the crane. So uh, this crane is going, I had looked at some, uh, some of the schematics on Google for old medieval style cranes, and they had these human powered ones uh, where people would turn this wheel and it would basically lift um, you know, lift and lower uh, the stuff from the crane. And so I kind of went with that design. So we built, once again, almost like the water wheel down below, we built uh, instead a slightly different style, but we built this um, kind of this human hamster wheel kind of design uh, and then built this big crane. And once again, lots of grindstones, lots of chains because they just look great. Went ahead and loaded up this platform with some chests, some ore and things like that. Uh, that are maybe coming from the mine. As well as a large platform there, like a viewing platform or working platform. And I added some chains on the side so that maybe that could be used to interlock some cogs inside of there somewhere that would then, uh, that, that power that's being generated on that human hamster wheel, as I like to call it, uh, maybe that would lock a cog in and cause it to turn the crane uh, one direction or another. So I try to make everything kind of make sense and be logical, at least somewhat logical, uh, in the way that it's set up. So right now we're going to go ahead and build ourselves our warehouse uh, because this this type area would naturally would have a big warehouse where things could be stored and uh, also I wanted some kind of a big building that kind of stood 
uh, and kind of stood proud over this area where we could have these platforms and have kind of these walkways that lead up to the cranes and things like that um, and kind of bring this whole um, this whole like industrialized area of the build um, kind of bring it all together and have this big large warehouse so this is going to be a three floor warehouse with fairly large ceilings you can see right here i've set up a kind of a little contraption we're going to talk about that at the end as well uh, we'll spend a little bit of time walking around the build at the end because this was a fairly large build this is uh, kind of a bulk build you know last episode we were kind of more focused in on uh, the starter home and kind of took our time with that this is kind of like building a whole district <laughs> in one video in like a, a 14 minute cut so you can see the roof here. I uh, kind of went with that and then kind of did a lifted lip uh, at the center there. It's not exactly centered, um, but kind of did a lifted lip. And it's actually an even spaced building, so we don't have uh, the really uh, ridged top, um, but that was intentional. Um, and then we also added some little windows and things up top. So. And now we're actually kind of build, uh, decorating out the second floor and kind of building this out. It's just going to be kind of dense storage. We've got a mechanism where we can basically lift from the first floor onto the second floor, as well as a small little mechanism in the corner there where we can lift from the second floor up to the third floor or vice versa, of course. Uh, and that way it makes it easy to move all this cargo around this building uh, because, you know, it wouldn't be lugged up steps, especially with the, with the way that the... Uh, the pathways are kind of laid out in this because you kind of have to go around the building to get up to the second floor. Uh, but even even without that, uh, cargo wouldn't be just packed up the stairs, especially like heavy uh, stones, metals, and things like that. So um, I try to set up little mechanisms, uh, kind of little pulley systems that would be used to move this cargo around, theoretically. And now we're building out the top floor um, of this. So it's going to have these really... Uh, this this heavily shelved in upper section where stuff is put this is basically just a really dingy storage like dense storage where stuff gets put and forgotten about you know every time I play survival and probably a lot of you guys you end up with a lot of just junk that you don't have the heart to get rid of uh, but you know that you'll never need like boxes and boxes and boxes of cobblestone this would be the place to store that right that would never ever be touched but you don't have the heart to get rid of it this would be the place to put it um, I went ahead and decorated with I did throw in some cobwebs lots of storage um, and also some banners just to kind of uh, simulate like old fabric and stuff that's up there um, and then right now we're going to go ahead and just kind of add some detail to the outside of the building. Um, a lot of the stuff here I didn't get on camera because I was I was whizzing around uh, doing a lot of stuff, adding fences up top and kind of decorating out. Um, also broke open parts of the mountain um, to make it look like maybe ore had been mined off the mountain face. Um, but then supports were ran to kind of keep the mountain from collapsing down especially with the weight of our crane and foot traffic and wood being carried up. I tried to make it uh, look like it was all supported. And then we're building our mine. Now, we're not actually going to be building the interior of the mine, just the exterior today. Uh, we might end up coming through and doing an interior mine build. Um, just like I plan on maybe doing some interior decorating episodes, but that'll be a separate, a separate thing because we actually built a lot today. Uh, this it was it was like like I said like 14 minutes of footage but it was a lot of time not just building but also planning and stuff like that um, and a lot of cutting and figuring out what I wanted to do and whatnot so you can see lots of supports there on the mine my idea with the mine is that especially with a medieval structure like this they're not gonna worry about how it looks um, that's one thing I, I always dislike seeing like really symmetrical really really pretty mines because at the end of the day, they are just for digging ore from the ground and bringing it out. Generally, they're not really pretty, but they have lots of supports and stuff ran. Uh, you know, to, especially in this case, to keep the mountain from falling down with a heavy crane on top and whatnot. Uh, so I tried to simulate that with just a whole lot of just supports, messy supports. And then we're just going to go through, we're going to finish up, do some final touches, decorating, um, adding some texture, you know, adding the mossy and the cracked stone. Uh, we also add a little bit of oak wood to the, all the spruce roofs that are up here, just to make it look like maybe there's some areas where 
uh, it's been sun bleached or you know damaged or something like that um, but overall just kind of doing a little bit of touch-ups here and there and we'll kind of walk through the by uh, the build and take a closer look at it um, and kind of go through some of the little contraptions that I set up like I said um, just kind of having some fun with the idea trying to do logical setups for moving and uh, producing all this various ore and wood and stuff that would be coming from this district um, and then being shipped off originally I was planning a blacksmith but I decided the blacksmith probably wouldn't be here it would be somewhere off on the mainland because there's not enough room over here really all right so from our starter house we have two different options to get over to uh, kind of the industrial district you can see some nice a nice view of the crane back behind our warehouse there uh, but we have this one this uh, bridge that goes across right here um, i made sure and made it all accessible for boats to get underneath this um, so we can we can run boats underneath here um, i also spent a little bit of time doing the underwater stuff uh, you know i want to make sure and uh, make all that look nice uh, down here as well uh, you can see I added some andesite along the top uh, just to get that little bit of contrast. You can see some mossy stone. You'll see some crack, some oak, uh, just to add some texture. Uh, also, coming down the river, you can see some logs. We may end up adding more logs uh, being floated down. Uh, we'll see. And actually, on that note, um, as I was looking, I was basically just uh, kind of looking around to see how the rivers ran uh, naturally in this, uh, in this world. And these go off for a little bit but they end up kind of tapering off over there um, and off over this little pond. However, we'll do a quick, a quick fly over here. Um, <clears throat> if we go off in this direction, and actually uh, you can see the mine right down there, uh, but my idea is that the river would run down along through here and then go kind of into like these underground uh, riverways and then would probably come out somewhere back in here uh, and then this, you can see the river kind of comes out and it's like it's trying to go off towards the swamp. So we do kind of have a large body of water over here. Uh, so my idea was that the river, the current would be flowing in this direction. So it would pull the logs down naturally. They wouldn't have to be rafted down. Um, and then uh, I added a, a bit of like overgrowth because, you know, this area here wouldn't be mowed. It's never going to get any foot traffic or anything like that. So it would be heavily overgrown. Uh, down along, especially down along through here. This covered walkway, and it's pretty straightforward, uh, not super elaborate. I did throw a little bit of clutter down in here, and I did the old wheelbarrow style. If you guys played vanilla back in the day, you remember this really, really old wheelbarrow. Um, I always thought it looked more like a horse cart, and that was my idea here, just kind of throwing this old rickety little horse cart in, or rickshaw, maybe. You know, it would make a really good rickshaw. Uh, kind of throwing that into here. Um, over here we kind of have a nice little fishing spot uh, where fishermen can hang out in comfort with their nice little chairs. Uh, these are really, really basic little chairs, but they can fish off of here um, because once again, current bringing it all downstream, uh, there's liable to be some pretty good fishing uh, down in here. And you can see right back in here, this is kind of uh, blocked off so our logs and stuff can't go past this point. Uh, you know, if somebody's not there manning that station, the logs we kind of get piled up down here uh, back up we'll come back to the lumber mill in just a moment but uh, back up to here uh, we continue down along through the walkway nothing crazy um, exciting about the walkway itself uh, we do have kind of a little break area down in here uh, so i figured maybe they'll have their uh, work dock workers and stuff would have their lunch or whatever here uh, just a little really really simple basic sitting area with the most basic of basic chairs uh, down in here this area is kind of blocked off and you can see some heavy under uh, overgrowth down in there and down here once again not any foot traffic uh, so this area would be wild wildly overgrown um, I did add a waterfall up there because I just felt like this area needed a waterfall uh, back up here we've got a couple different paths that pretty much lead to the same area this one takes uh, goes up along the highway uh, the higher the higher side up along the warehouse you can see I did on the side of the warehouse I did add stairs andesite stairs uh, to kind of give it this little indented section there 
Um, but going down towards the lumber mill, uh, you can see all the supports kind of supporting up the mountain to make sure that it does not come crashing down because we have a lot of weight built up atop this mountain. Plus, we are doing some mining uh, down in here as well. So there would naturally be a lot of just supports kind of holding that up. Um, this is, of course, an area for the crane to collect this platform. Uh, it would be the, the wood that comes off uh, from the lumber mill. Uh, and then over to the lumber mill itself. Uh, you can see the interior here. And we kind of have these lecterns. If you look real close, of course, you can see the books. But um, I don't think it's that big of a deal, uh, to be honest. Uh, now, right over here, we have our first little mechanism here. So we have, I'm using fences here to kind of act as, uh, you know, where the chain would slide along, um, you know, would bring the log over and drop it onto here. And so that would be picked up right here uh, and then brought over. Uh, so we kind of have these chains here to kind of maybe move it back and forth. Um, it would, of course, use the power of the, the water wheel here to get the log into position. Uh, and then this one would maybe be used to drop it or something like that. Uh, so just those chains to kind of symbolize, you know, how the how the operating, the daily operating of the lumber mill would go. Um, also, I found I really like crafting tables for this area because they have hand saws. So I was like, I'm going to stick some crafting tables over here because maybe they need hand saws to cut off, uh, you know, obscure bits of the wood or something like that. Lots of axes and things. Um, and this would be a great place for storing like bulk axes or whatnot in a survival type world. Um, I put ladder on the side because maybe a ladder would be used to access some of these higher shelves. I always like to keep ladders uh, in a lot of these storage rooms with high shelves and things like that. You'll see them uh, in a lot of our stuff. And then down uh, to here we kind of have these little chain uh, railings, these really really light railings. Uh, down along through here and then the logs would be collected here probably uh, I know From what I was reading they would use hooks, you know to hook the logs and pull them over I tend to get a, a little bit of a history lesson every time I build something like this so I do a bit of reading and a little bit of researching and stuff It's it makes it it makes it fun. So uh, I did go ahead and just kind of put some supports up underneath the fishing dock as well Also some lanterns in case it's dark they can see uh, logs incoming down through here um, and then we have our water wheel so a pretty simple design really uh, for our water wheel using grindstones of course I love grindstones it's like one of my favorite blocks that was ever added you know we used them a lot in our last uh, vanilla series for things like uh, wheelbarrows and stuff like that um, and they also make great accompaniments for anything Kind of mechanical as well um, also there is a ladder up here this is kind of like where a cave had been and they kind of just blocked it off because they've mined everything you can actually see some coal back in there but theoretically they mined everything they wanted from it so um, right here we have the mine so we kind of have this these mine cars that basically they can just run out the, the chest push them um, which I know traditionally would be used in mines to, uh, they'd load the mine carts up and then push them out and so that was kind of my thinking there. Uh, we got a chest here. It's not actually a chest, just a compost barrel, but for torches. Uh, supports ran, of course, uh, down along through here. And then it comes out. Uh, the mine isn't actually anything at the moment, but this is where the mine would be. We have storage for picks and shovels. We have where the crane could access, you know, this little platform, which is currently being filled up with ore and things and we have some stock TNT there. So you can actually see the crane up there. I thought this little natural hole was just too perfect and I had to use it. I always like finding little things like that in survival worlds as well. Of course, this world's not survival, but uh, I do like finding those kind of things in survival and making use of them. Uh, so right over here, we have a little area um, where the crane could then drop things off. And actually, as I was building this, I added a little bit of extra cracked bricks here where maybe the crane has uh, had some had, had a couple mishaps in the past uh, putting the cargo down here. Uh, and then this little area is just this really, really rickety uh, bit of supports that have been ran where maybe the ore was mined, but then the support was ran as kind of a safety precaution uh, to make sure that uh, 
you know, this bit of the, the mountain didn't collapse and stuff. You can see uh, a lot of gravel and stuff where that rock's broken up. Uh, we have one of the newer uh, wheelbarrow styles. This is one kind of like what we used uh, back in our last vanilla run through. So maybe the stuff can be collected in the wheelbarrow and brought in uh, to this storage room. So this is our first, our first storage. This is the bottom storage coming right off of the crane. Uh, we have lots of barrels, and if you're in a survival situation, you have extra storage. Down along through here, ender chest, access to crafting tables, shulker boxes, uh, and overall just general storage. There is also a lift right up here, which is manned by the second floor. So if we come around this side of the warehouse and kind of connect it onto this roadway, we can come up, a lot of overgrowth, once again not a lot of foot traffic, because this isn't the type of place where anybody would be hanging out. This is the industrial district, and nobody has any business over there. We come up through here, and we come up around this little walkway uh, up to the second floor, and we do have a little balcony up in here uh, that kind of overlooks uh, this area. and. Uh, and the crane and everything actually has a pretty good view of the crane uh, from here and then if we step on inside into our second floor storage uh, so here we have once again kind of dense storage for various different things and of course in a survival situation you could put item frames on this and make it you know a little bit more personalized uh, but we're just going for kind of bulk storage and there's chains here and on the other side of my thinking is uh, because there's two different sections there's this one and there's this one uh, basically the left and right uh, so the right side here or our current right side would control the right line of chains and the left side would control the left line of chains so this could be pulled um, theoretically of course um, and then basically it would all just be human power but it would be pulled um, by hand to lift and lower and move the chains you know down along this little contraption uh, so it could pull the cargo up and move it over and set it down here and then you know we could load things up and send them down to the bottom floor uh, making that very accessible and then you can see right here we have kind of a little lift going on over here and if we head up the ladder this takes us up to our final level of storage which is this just really really cluttered a mess of like old stuff that's probably never going to be messed with uh, but just kind of kind of bulk storage for junk more or less it does have a nice view of the crane though uh, but I always like to decorate in this kind of like uh, at least have some areas that are kind of like old almost forgotten barely used type areas where we can actually utilize cobwebs and bits of uh, scrap and armor stands with no armor and just things kind of just tossed around so I went with that. This is a perfect place, I think, uh, for that. And we do have some uh, really tall ladder here to access these upper shelves of kind of forgotten, probably cobblestone and dirt <laughs> uh, from the build, you know. And then once again, a, a uh, grindstone here, uh, because in theory this would spin and the chain would get wrapped around it and be pulled up, you know. Uh, now let's head back down. And if we come out this door, we can head up the side of the mountain here and go up towards our crane. Um, I actually had a lot of fun building this. It didn't take a whole lot of time, maybe an hour. Um, the cranes tend to be fairly easy to build. Um, best thing to do is just Google like medieval cranes and find a design that you kind of like. Uh, this one was based off of, I found uh, on Google, I found an old, it was kind of a black and white schematic of an old medieval crane <laughs> that I kind of based it off of so it had this like I don't know if I in in the schematic you know I'm not entirely sure because I, from what I read there was like a couple different kinds uh, but I don't know if, if this one was intended for people to actually like walk on kind of like a hamster wheel uh, to move it or if it was one that they would turn by hand uh, but the wheel looked abnormally big uh, to be turned by hand and I know that they did have some like hamster wheel designs, my human hamster wheel. Um, so I was like, well, we're going to go with that. And it's going to be big enough to at least be a hamster wheel for people. Uh, so basically people would get in there and they'd turn it, you know, walking through it. So 
Um, and anyways, that would lift and lower the grain. Now, realistically, I don't know if it would support this much weight. I don't know, but, uh, you know, I'm not an engineer. But I was just kind of having some fun with it, so. Um, but anyways, our crane, basically the, uh, the wheel gets turned. This would be kind of supporting this side of the wheel. And then that kinetic power would come through and then it would go into this and kind of travel up the crane right there. Um, let's see, most of this is just kind of cluttery stuff and uh, you can see the mine down in there where the crane can then access that uh, I did add a lot of buttons and stuff because um, and also all this all this stone and stuff because cranes uh, as I was reading cranes would have a really heavy foundation poured um, of stone and stuff or concrete uh, and then it would get it would get installed because uh, if the weight was too heavy it would cause the crane to tilt and lean especially over time would cause them to actually collapse uh, so I poured I poured I poured me some stone down here uh, as the foundation and lots of like uh, basically uh, fastenings to support all of this uh, now if we head up up here we kind of have the uh, kind of the control this would be like the control platform uh, so we have a nice viewing platform probably be manned by a couple people I imagine um, and then we have these chains one on this side, one on the other side, and theoretically this would basically, uh, as I mentioned before, we kind of lock a cog in, and the kinetic power from the human hamster wheel would then, um, that cog would turn and cause this to maybe swing out in this direction uh, over towards the mine. So um, it's not really intended to swing out in this direction. If it did, that would probably be a, a uh-oh, because there's a tree over there, but um, it is designed to kind of swing out in this direction uh, down towards the mine there um, and then aside from that it's mostly all just decorative stuff you can see uh, the chain comes up and then about right in here it would go and kind of come out on this side come up the back and then come through to here and then of course we've got kind of a worn down roof here um, maybe crane mishaps and things like that and uh, it's probably not maintenance too much unless uh, it's in dire need of it so uh, just kind of being sort of an industrial district uh, over here so um, as far as the detail work on this uh, the second and third floor I went pretty simple um, just doing the signs across and you know a little bit of uh, uh, support beams some fences you know uh, quite a bit of lanterns but this place would be busy during the night and the day chances are uh, so it would need ample lighting, especially people carrying heavy loads and stuff around these docks. Or, well, I say docks, not really docks, but, you know, around this, like, little industrial area. And if you guys want to see a quick night flyby, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. This video is already getting super long. Uh, but if you guys want to see what it looks like at night, I actually really love, of course, shaders make it wonderful at night. And, uh quite beautiful at night. I did add a lantern uh, up here just so that this kind of glows so that because otherwise it's just this big dark block at night. Uh, of course the top of the crane is dark but uh, looks quite spiffy there. Uh, and if we come around over to this side that's what this side looks like. And uh, this little walkway I love it. I love it so much more at night like it just really I think makes it and then uh, kind of from above up here looking down on the the areas below below us there um, and then down into the mine so really enjoy it at night so it's really especially at night you can kind of see it's really all starting to come together I think I'm really excited for uh, for some of the stuff coming up and as we bring this world together uh, but anyways, that's pretty much the the uh, the build. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I actually had a lot of fun with this. Um, I spent a couple days working on this and, um, I don't know, just having a blast. And uh, once again, this will be available to patrons uh, as a world download and then uh, down the road. At some point, once we finish this world, uh, the finished world will be available as a world download to the public. So... Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed the build. This was a this was a big one, and I had a lot of fun with it. And I hope you guys enjoy the build, um, and enjoy the series as it's coming together. I've actually been working on another uh, build project 
uh, which is a different world, which will, it's a little bit bigger, so it'll, it'll be some time before that's out probably. And I've been planning out the next couple builds in this world, uh, which I'm also really excited to jump into because this world will keep growing and keep evolving. And it's kind of, I think this build kind of uh, allows us to kind of show what this, what this series is going to be about because we've done starter homes before. This starter home isn't really anything all that crazy. It's not all that impressive. It's not all that big. Uh, but it was kind of like an introduction to the to the series. Whereas this is a fairly large build um, and kind of a sign of the, the world growing um, and hopefully over time becoming a nice cohesive uh, like city that we're going to be putting together. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, as always, be sure and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already to stay updated with when new videos come out. And I hope to see you guys next time. So until then, as always, do take care, stay safe, and I'll see you guys then.